Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about a, a new idea that I've come up with for vocal rooms. We've used it in about four or five different situations and the feedback has been tremendous. So I don't know if you witness the same thing or hear the same thing I do in today's vocals, but today's vocals sound like they were made in small rooms. I can hear the boxiness, I can hear the restrictions, I can hear the walls of the room and it doesn't really matter what the recording is. Anytime there's voice involved, I don't have that sense of openness and air and space that we really need with vocals. So I've come up with a combination and a blending of technologies that really fixes this problem, I think. And from my feedback that I get with the engineers, they say that they don't touch the voice when they use this technique till maybe at the very end of the mix. They never grab for reverb and delay immediately that they like what they get right out of the gate with this approach and they don't really want to manipulate the signal electronically till maybe at the at the very end to get it to blend with the rest of the mix. So let's talk about the process. We know that voice goes from 100 to about 2000. That's the area that we really focus upon when we when we're uh, treating technologies using technologies to treat voice and, and hear it. So our foam technology goes from 125 to 6500. Our carbon technology, which is new now, we, we use our carbon technology inside our diaphragmatic absorption products, but we haven't used it for mids and highs. Well, we've come up with a one and a two inch panel. It's not on our website yet, won't be for a while, but shoot me an email if you're interested and we can uh, help you with it. We're finding our carbon technology in a perforated absorber format goes from 90 to 2500 cycles. So here's our tools. We got foam at 125 to 600. We got carbon from 90 to 2500. And we got quadratic diffusion 200 to 3500. So we have three tools we can use to address voice. So as you can see, most of the tools fall within the frequency response range of voice, male or female, doesn't matter. So how do we get these three technologies to work in a room that benefits our recording and gives us a recording with voice that sounds more natural, has air in it, and more importantly, has no room in it. Ew, the sounds are horrible. We won't talk about signal processing of the voice, you know, with auto-tune and all that, that's different. But we're just trying to get a more natural realistic sounding vocal in our small room. So how do we do it? Quadratic diffusion, front wall, rear wall. And then what we've been doing is for the sidewall reflections, because our singer, our microphone, and our front wall and our rear wall, you know, it's a small room. So the singer is the source and we have to adjust for it. So just like we have a left and right channel, we have singer at the source. But the singer now in this position faces the diffusion and the rear wall is also diffusion here, okay? And then what we do is we take our one inch thick carbon panels and our two inch thick carbon panels and we put our one and our two here, one and two here to manage primary, secondary and tertiary reflections before they get to the microphone. Then we use sound absorption foam on the ceiling to manage that floor to ceiling bounce at the microphone position. So the bottom line here in our room, foam on the ceiling, diffusion front rear walls, and carbon on the side walls gives an unbelievably balanced and natural approach to sound. This carbon is, we're finding just to be tremendous in its applications. And we're gonna be uh, creating some new products next year. Hopefully I'll get time to go back in the lab and design some new stuff. But right now we, we are building the one in the two inch thick ones. So they're heavy, you know, they're 40, 50 pounds each. It's not foam, but we find that using a combination course, you have to diff, uh, choose the correct diffusion sequence to match the distances to the microphone and all of that stuff. I mean, the same rules apply that we use in small room acoustics with speakers. It's just that our speaker in this place is a, is a singer or vocalist. So this process works, diffusion, front and rear wall, carbon, both side walls and foam on the ceiling. Now, it's not cheap, you know, because you look at what you're using here. Diffusion is expensive. The carbon's not too bad, but it's more expensive than the foam. So 
Foam is the cheapest. That's why everybody uses it. That's why all the vocals sound the same today. So put some diffusion, uh, get some carbon in there to control the uh, uh, reflections on the sidewalls at the microphone position, and you're going to get a vocal presentation that you're just not going to believe. You're not going to believe you got that sound in a really small room. So give this uh, new technique that we have a try. If you're needing more information about it or want to see if it's uh, applicable to your room situation, just shoot me an email, info at acousticfields.com. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video, and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions, and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum, and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis, so that'll help you. Thank you.